Heavenly Father, we um, know that you're on your throne looking down upon this world and you see everything and you hear everything. And we pray, Heavenly Father, that you will help us now to, to see and also to hear the things that we need to know to prepare us for the coming of Christ. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So what I find very fascinating at the moment in America is this Robin Hood saga where um, where the uh, the average um, American and, and possibly other people around the world are taking on the uh, the, um, the big wigs on uh, on Wall Street. There, these um, these hedge funds have have um, perpetrated what what I would call illegal fraud <laughs> on many occasions. What they do is they they short the stock on companies that they target, and they 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 place a bet, and the, and it's just a casino really. The, it's a glorified casino. They bet that the stock is going to go down, and then. These these hedge fund managers they are considered gurus when it comes to um, Wall Street and and they're always on on uh, TV shows talking about finance and shares and what people should invest in and so because they short the stock on this particular company they talk the company down they want the stock to go down that's what they want and if they if they want the stock to go down they will earn money so, but these Robin Hood investors who are uh, Ordinary, this Robin Hood app is designed for ordinary people that bypasses brokers. They don't have to pay brokers fees. So it appeals to the mass of uh, people out there who just have a little bit of money to invest. And what they did was they all, they all bought the stock of this company that was targeted. It was called um, GameStop. It's, a, it's, a actually a, it's actually a company which sells um, games, on, uh, at, at, not online. They're, they're um, hard. Their hard disk uh, games, and um, and they 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 boosted the stock up, and the the higher they boost the stock, uh, the more money these hedge funds are going to lose. There's phenomenal amounts of money they're talking about. It's a seventy billion dollars that they're on the hook for, and um, and so it's it's playing out right now. And uh, and now they've launched another um, attack into the silver market, and and. They're starting to recognize, uh, realize the power they have to manipulate the market themselves, and and what is interesting about about it is that people in the mass media, they're waking up. <laughs> Some I, I was listening to a couple of them saying, "Wow, we knew the we knew the the market was rigged, but we didn't realize it was rigged this much." <laughs> and and it's what Trump was talking about during his um. Uh, 216 uh, campaign. He talked a lot about the rigged system, and and people are not, people are seeing it now, and and it's becoming more self-evident on a daily basis that the whole system is rigged. I'm talking about Wall Street, but then people need to realize that everything is rigged. <laughs> the political system is rigged. Uh, the whole country is rigged, and it's this woman riding the beast who's doing it. <laughs> She's um. She's the corrupt queen, the corruption queen. And um, so what we're going to do now is uh, talk about her. But all right, we need to have a little background on how prophecy works to understand who this woman is. And first of all, I, I want to reiterate what I said, that, that the, the beast that comes out of the sea in Revelation 13 as Adventists, we all know this is a picture of the Roman Catholic papacy. There's no, no argument about that. And then we see the exact same beast in Revelation 17, seven heads and ten horns and all the other accoutrements. So that must be the Roman Catholic Church too. But now there is a woman riding the Roman Catholic Church. <laughs> So it would appear to me to be a separate entity. This woman has to be something separate from the Roman Catholic Church, but also a part of it. So now let's back up a little bit now. Let's, um, let's talk about how the book of Revelation reveals these things to us. And there are, there are words in the 
in the uh, in the in the book of Revelation that are placed there like codes, and they have to be deciphered. And I'm going to give you an example before we talk about the woman on the beast, how this works. You take the river Euphrates. It's mentioned twice in the book of Revelation. So what we have to do now, in order to understand why it is mentioned in the book of Revelation, we have to go back into the Bible, the Old Testament, and look about look how the river Euphrates is used. And I'll give you an example. Um, in Joshua, Joshua is giving his last speech to the to the Israelites before he he uh, retires, and he says to says to them. Our fathers lived on the other side of the flood. Now he's referring to the river Euphrates. And God took a, our, our father Abraham out of the other side of the flood, out of the city of Ur, which is also known as, the, as Ur of the Chaldees. And he took him and took him over the river. And first of all, it's interesting that, that Abraham comes from, from Ur of the Chaldees because the Chaldees and the Babylonians are kind of synonyms. They're the same people. So God is calling Abraham out of Babylon and taking him across the Euphrates and placing him in the promised land, which is a symbol of heaven. And um, and so we have the same situation in our time. We have to, again, the original call was out of Babylon and come over into the promised land. We have to do the same thing to the Babylon that exists today. We have to call the people out to cross over to the other side. So what the river Euphrates is, and by the way, if you, if you use a, um, a modern translation, these modern translations try and help you out, and they will take this word, the flood, and they will remove it and put in the river Euphrates. They think they're helping, but it's actually not helping at all. But it's obscuring the fact that the Euphrates is called the flood. It's called, it's very seldom called the river Euphrates in the Old Testament. They call it the flood, or they call it the great river, or the, just simply the river. And what the river is, it's the boundary between Babylon and God's kingdom. So when we decipher all of that, then we understand why the word Euphrates is used in the book of Revelation. It's, the, it's talking about the boundary between God's kingdom and Babylon. And that's what we're supposed to learn from it. And incidentally, uh, because it's called the flood, this imagery, and by the way, it's called the flood because it's a snow-fed river. And at every spring, it would flood. And so you have this imagery now of, of the water flowing over the border from Babylon or flowing into the promised land. And for example, when the king of Assyria, Sennacherib, invaded, um, invaded uh, Israel, and he, he, he managed to get all the way to, to Jerusalem, the Bible says he came like the flood, and the flood went all the way up to the neck of Jerusalem. Uh, Jerusalem is way up in the mountains. It's about 3,000 feet up in the air. And, um, and so you could, the imagery is of when the, when the, the Assyrian king, Sennacherib, comes to, comes to conquer God's people, kill God's people, control God's people, he comes like a flood. And he goes like this. He goes, starts down here and he goes ding, 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 up to the neck. And you know the story. The angel went out and slew 180,000 of them and they all receded. They all went, the flood went back home again. So this is how, this is how the Bible now uses both the river Euphrates and flood imagery to tell us a story, to tell us what's going on. Do you remember in um, Revelation? Um, uh, 12, it talks about Satan casting out of his mouth a water, water like a flood to drown God's people. It's the same imagery. Okay. Now, once we know this, then we can decipher other. This is kind of like a principle. And there are other code words in the book of Revelation. 
And if we go to uh, Revelation uh, chapter 3, where it's talking about the seven churches. No, it's this chapter 2. Uh, we have seven churches, and as you know, they all indicate different periods of church history. And the fourth one is the is the history of the Roman Catholic Church, when the Roman Catholic Church was supreme. And it says in there, you have in, you have, you tolerate that woman, Jezebel. Now, that's a code word. We have to go back into the Old Testament and we have to understand everything about Jezebel. What, what did she do? What was she all about? How did God's people react? Well, you know the story. Abraham married her. He married a pagan princess. And what did she do? She brought all her pagan practices into Israel and virtually destroyed God's, um, God's people. God said, Ab Elijah thought he was the only one left. And God said to him, no, I've got 7,000 who haven't bowed the knee to Baal. So what that is telling us is the inroads of paganism into the Catholic Church. And the Catholics admit it. They, they actually admit it openly. Um, Cardinal Newman wrote, he, he has a whole list of pagan practices. And he goes, ding, 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 maybe 20 of them. And he says, we brought them all into the Catholic Church, but it's okay because we Christianized them when we brought them in. And the whole, the whole what, what Roman Catholicism, Catholicism is, it's baptized paganism. It's, it's Christian in name, but in essence, it's paganism. It's simply, they simply change the names of everything. Um, the, the statue of Jupiter, for example, in, in Rome becomes St. Peter. You know, <laughs> they just convert all these pagan things into Christianity. So this is what Jezebel did back then, and this is what happened to the Catholic Church, and it's still like that today. And so what we have when we get to the book of Revelation, we, it, well, let me back up a minute. It, you just get this brief mention of Jezebel in the church in Revelation 2. But most people, if you talk to, if you talk to most people, they, they don't understand the, the Catholic Church as being pagan. They have no idea. They think it's Christian. Um, Alberto Rivera said, it's not actually Christian. It's the world's largest cult. And he, I'm sure you know who he, who he was. He was a, a, a Jesuit who, who escaped the system. So it, it's pagan to the core. It simply uses Christian names and um, to cover the, cover the paganism. And so in, in uh, Revelation 2, you get a glimpse of that. That's why Jezebel is mentioned. You get a glimpse of it. But you don't see the pagan uh, essence of the Roman Catholic Church until you get to Revelation 17. And there you see the woman in all her glory rolling over the Catholic Church. She is paganism. She is Jezebel. And Alan White tells us that, that eventually all of that has to be exposed. It will be exposed, she says. And people are going to be amazed to hear that the Catholic Church is, is a pagan uh, church. And um, that's our job. We're, we're supposed to be doing this. But how can we do it if we don't understand what, um, <laughs> how, how to reveal it? We, we have to tell this story to, to people. And we will. And I believe we will do it under the influence of the, of the latter rain. But, um, and God will teach us. The Holy Spirit will teach us what we're supposed to say. And this is, um, this is going to be something that uh, the people are going to be amazed when they hear it. And eventually they're going to be so angry, they're going to tear their false priests to pieces, she says, tear them apart. And, and, but this is, this is what we are supposed to be doing. We are supposed to be exposing this. So that's what I believe the woman on the beast represents. She, she's not in Revelation 17, uh, sorry, not in Revelation 13, because she's still under wraps. She's, um, everybody, everybody worships the, um, the beast, the Pope, 
in Revelation 13, because probably because they think he's God. So they don't understand yet that this is really just paganism. But when we when we get to the, the prophecies are built on repeat and enlarge. So all through all through Daniel and the book of Revelation up to chapter 13, it's talking about Babylon. It's talking about the beast, the Roman Catholic Church. And everybody thinks it's Christian. But when we get to Revelation 17, we have this additional information about the woman riding the beast where she is now exposed for everybody to see. So that's what I believe the woman on the beast is. It is the Roman Catholic system, but it's in its in its fullness, in its true light. 